What's up YouTube, this is Mathos97 and welcome to the Wrestlemania 30 pay-per-view for WWE 2K15 Universe Mode. Here we go, the Wrestlemania pay-per-view is finally upon us. It has taken almost two full years to get to this, actually it has taken two full years to get to this point, but we're finally here at a Wrestlemania pay-per-view in Universe Mode. So, let's take a look at the match card, shall we? Got the United States Championship is it is Cesaro versus Alberto Del Rio. We've got the Shield taking on the Wyatt family. Fatal four way for the Intercontinental Championship it is Ryback, Titus O'Neil, Darren Young, and Cody Rhodes. The Divas Championship is on the line as Brie Bella will defend the title in a rematch against Summer Rae, who cashes in her rematch clause here tonight. And speaking of rematches, we have the Royal Rumble rematch. Tonight will be Daniel Bryan seeking redemption against the Beast Incarnate, Brock Lesnar. And what about this one? A fantasy matchup of colossal proportions as Sting, the icon, will go one-on-one -on -one with the Phenom, The Undertaker. The World Heavyweight Championship will be defended in a triple threat match as it's Mark Henry, Christian, and Edge battling for the title. And how about this? The main event, the WWE Championship is on the line as The Rock defends against the winner of the Royal Rumble, CM Punk. This is going to be a huge WrestleMania, folks. And as always, the match times will be down in the description. So if you're new around here, don't know what exactly I mean, well, you just go down there. Say you want to skip ahead to the Sting Undertaker match. I mean, that's sure going to be a spectacle, I'm sure. That's why some people are here. But if you want to go skip to that, you can just go down into the description you can just click the time, it'll be listed right there. You can go right ahead to that matchup. Or maybe you want to go ahead to the Shield Wide Family matchup. Well, you can do that any match you may please down there in the description. Or you could tough it out like I am to do this commentary, and you could watch the entire pay-per-view. I know it's going to be something like an hour 45 minutes, so if you do stick around for the entire video, got to give you props first of all, and I want to thank you for sticking with me throughout this journey and of course I want to thank you all for your support over the past calendar year in universe mode of course it's been almost three years to this point we finally made it to a Wrestlemania some of you may have thought it would never happen but we've made it we're finally here to Wrestlemania and of course it's in the Wrestlemania 30 arena no doubt I mean at this point in universe mode the number for each WrestleMania is going to be irrelevant because I'm not going to be able to get to a WrestleMania yearly, which is a bit unfortunate, but I just, at the moment, I don't have the time where I can um, edit these videos and whatnot to get them out at a regular basis so I can have, like, the regular schedule WWE would have. So, like, uh, Raw on Monday, SmackDown on Thursday, you know, it does, just doesn't work out. It's not in the cards for me. But... We're still plugging along, we're still going ahead with this series, and this WrestleMania pay-per-view should be epic. Hopefully it'll be well worth the wait, as it does have quite a build-up leading up to it. Talking about build-ups, how about this matchup? The United States Championship is on the line, as Alberto Del Rio, Mexico's greatest export, will defend the title against the Swiss Superman Cesaro. And Cesaro really... His journey to the United States Championship has been quite a long one. I mean, ever since Cesaro debuted prior to SummerSlam, Cesaro, he's been gunning for that U.S. title. And he really didn't... I mean, he was looking impressive, don't get me wrong, but he just hadn't quite stepped up to get his singles opportunity until the Elimination Chamber when he faced off against Del Rio. Now, now it is true that Cesaro, he did compete in the Battle Royal at Survivor Series, he was, in fact, the first man eliminated from that battle royal. And, of course, that was a pinfall submission battle royal. So, you know, it was no easy feat getting Cesaro out of there, but he was the first man eliminated. And, of course, that was when Del Rio originally won the U.S. title. It did... There was a bit of an exchange where it went back and forth between Del Rio and Swagger. But in the end, Del Rio... After all was said and done with the Royal Rumble, Del Rio was your United States champion. And then, of course, at Elimination Chamber, Del Rio managed to he managed to get the victory over Cesaro. It was a close call. I mean, Del Rio really took a beating in that matchup. But for the most part, it was advantage Del Rio. So in the end, it was Del Rio who did score the victory. And 
you know, it just wasn't Cesaro's night. He wasn't on his A game. He did put up some sort of a fight against Del Rio, but for the most part, it was Del Rio who had control of the matchup. But now here tonight, I think Cesaro, he's got a different mindset. We've seen the past couple of weeks, he's been breaking out some new unique moves to his arsenal, like the triple gut wrench suplex, or how about that northern light suplex into a brain buster, for one. Of course, then he's got his normal powerhouse moves, like the, uh, the Cesaro swing, and that huge uppercut, and let's not forget the piece de resistance, the neutralizer, which, you know, just puts most people down for the count. And of course, then we've got Del Rio, as we can see right now, measuring Cesaro for one of those vicious kicks. That's definitely a strong point in Del Rio's arsenal. But then he's also got his arm targeting moves and his submission holds. And, you know, of course, capped off with the devastating cross arm breaker. One of the most destructive, most intimidating finishing moves, or submission moves, I should say, in the business. Definitely finish, finishing moves as well. I think Del Rio, a lot of the time, as soon as he cinches that move in, it's not very long before his opponents are tapping out. And now look at this, Cesaro just rubbing Del Rio's face up against the, against the rope there. But at the moment, I mean, you can see a nice back and forth contest. That's, that's what we like to see. So far, it's looking... I mean, in terms of the match at Elimination Chamber, it was more so Del Rio's in his favor, but at the moment, it looks like Cesaro's kind of got the advantage as he picks up Del Rio there. Look at Cesaro now, setting him up for a snap suplex. Nice move by, De by Cesaro. And Cesaro really has had a long journey to get to this point. Some may have thought that he was the favorite to win heading into the Elimination Chamber, and some may have been surprised that Del Rio managed to retain the title. But this... This is going to be Cesaro's last opportunity, perhaps, at the title. Because, I mean, he's already had his match once. And if he would lose again... Wait, look at this. Covered by Cesaro. One. Well, not even a two count. Del Rio manages to kick out pretty comfortably there. But, as I was saying, with Cesaro, you know, he's already lost once. If he, w if he were to lose again, I don't think he can... He's not going to be able to just as easily get right back in the title picture like he did this time around. Because now we've got more superstars especially with the WWE Draft coming up, that'll be able to step in and kind of fill that contender's position that Cesaro really has kind of had a stronghold over the past two months. Of course, Curtis Axel was waiting in the wings. He was definitely a solid number two contender. <clears throat> I don't know what's up with my throat, why it's doing this. But, um, yeah, Do Axel definitely has been a solid number two contender. But in the end, it just... Their match last on the last episode of Raw just kind of showed the gap between number one and number two. As Cesaro clearly was the better man, and he was the one who was deserving of this title opportunity. Yeah, I apologize. Um, these commentaries are going to be split up into parts just because of how long this pay-per-view is, but for some reason, for this part, my throat is all, like, scratchy. I don't know what's going on, but it's like, I don't know. If I start coughing at some point, I do apologize. And if my voice starts breaking like it is right now, I'm not sick or anything, so I don't know what's causing it. I mean, I even just had a drink. I was trying to stay hydrated before this. So I don't know what's going on. But, enough about that. Let's focus back in on the match at hand. This is why you're all here. Cesaro, look at this. He's got Del Rio up on his shoulders. Oh, what a move. A fisherman's carry slam right there. And now Cesaro just rubbing Del Rio's face in it, literally. Now drives an elbow right in between the shoulder blades. But Del Rio back to his feet, able to shove Cesaro away. Now delivers a huge clothesline. And now it is advantage Del Rio. As he's got Cesaro on the ropes right now. Del Rio picks him up. He's going to set him up for that beautiful back suplex right there. Taking down Cesaro. But Cesaro back up to it. There's a kick to the gut of Del Rio. And now a punch once more to the gut. But this time Del Rio blocks the strike attempt. And now it's Cesaro who counters with a strike of his own. And he was going for an uppercut, but Del Rio blocked it. Now, fires back. But look at this, Cesaro with a roll-up attempt here. But Del Rio, his arms were able to reach out, grab the ropes, force the rope break. And once again, Del Rio blocks that attempted uppercut. That's definitely a strong point in Cesaro's arsenal. Other than his, you know, his overwhelming power, his strength, but he's also got those devastating uppercuts. So you definitely, you don't want to take hits from any of those uppercuts, let alone just one. You don't want to get hit or let alone multiple. You don't want to get hit by any of them. And so far, Del Rio's done a good job 
He's had Cesaro well scouted. He's been able to block those uppercuts. But how long is Del Rio going to be able to keep that up? Look at this. Cesaro Minchinoku. Oh, thought he was going for the Minchinoku driver. That was just a scoop slam. My mistake. And now Cesaro delivers the uppercut. And he's got Del Rio staggered. Got him up against the ropes. And Del Rio with a nice counter, though. Able to regain his composure. And now he's got Cesaro here. He's measuring him. Look at this, Del Rio. Oh, now look at these. The strikes to the kidneys. To the lower back. And now setting him up for the backstabber through the ropes. And Cesaro's in trouble. Del Rio hits him with the backstabber. And now he's going to the corner. He's setting him up for that super kick. And he hits. No, Cesaro ducked it. Cesaro ducked the super kick. And look at this. He's got Del Rio. He's looking to put him away with the neutralizer. And that could do it, folks. Cesaro, he's just three seconds away from a victory here. If he can just cover Del Rio, he's got this matchup in the bag. Hooks the leg. One, two, three. Are you kidding me? Del Rio kicks out of the neutralizer. You got it. You can't be serious. That was Cesaro's finishing move. And Del Rio just kicked out of it at two and a half. Somehow, someway, Del Rio manages to stay alive in this matchup. And that just shows... Del Rio's dedication, his heart. Oh, look at that beautiful uppercut by Cesaro. And now Cesaro, another one of his vintage moves as he picks Del Rio up from the mat into a deadlift gut wrench suplex. And it is still advantage Cesaro now at this point. But Del Rio, the fact that he managed to kick out of the neutralizer just shows his dedication, his unwilling or his undying desire to retain that United States Championship. He is not willing to lose this title to Cesaro here tonight. I mean, after all that Del Rio went through to get that title, I mean, still, he's only had it for two months, so to lose it already at this point would be, you know, devastating. You know, look at look at this. Del Rio hits a moonsault. Well, that's not something you see too often from Del Rio. And now going after the arm of Cesaro there, setting him back up for that cross arm breaker. And now a kick to the back is Del Rio. You can tell he's really frustrated now. He knows that Cesaro's got him, got him in trouble. Cesaro, or Del Rio, he's going to have to try to finish this one off quickly. Because at this rate, the longer the match goes, the more it favors Cesaro. And now Del Rio setting up Cesaro in there in the corner for an Enziguri to the back of the head. And that's one of Del Rio's signature maneuvers, so he's definitely trying to go for the victory quick here. And now goes for the cover. One, two, no. Kick out by Cesaro, two and a half. That was a very close call there for Cesaro. And so now he's crawling, trying to get back to his feet. Del Rio just kind of waiting for an opportunity. Delivers a punch to the gut of Del Rio. And now he goes over the top rope here. Cesaro, what could he be thinking now? Oh, nice forearm shot right to the face of Del Rio. And what the heck is Cesaro planning here? What is he going for? Oh, no. Cesaro, he's not going to pull this off. Oh, my God, Cesaro! With a superplex off the apron. Look at Cesaro. There, there's no... There, I don't even know how to describe that. But Cesaro, that's just pure power, pure strength. There's no leverage there. I mean, Cesaro just deadlifting him off the apron, but he was going for the pin, but you can tell that took a lot out of Cesaro as he, you know, he was unaware of his ring presence. He was just desperate at that point to go for the pin attempt on Del Rio, and Del Rio, fortunately for him, was able to get to the ropes. Del Rio now, oh, and that's again, this time a bit of desperation from Del Rio. Oh, wait, cover. Roll up by Cesaro. One, two, no, wait, Del Rio reverses it. One, two, three, no, now Cesaro reverses it. Two count, could he have? No, counter. One, kick out by Cesaro, man. What an exchange right there, but as I was trying to say, Del Rio, you know, he was desperate to get the win there. Locked in the cross arm breaker, but Cesaro was too close to the ropes. Del Rio had to break it. And now Cesaro, he picks up Del Rio. But Del Rio now delivers a kick right to the leg. And look at Del Rio going for something here. But Cesaro countered. Nice counter there by Cesaro, beautiful counter at that. Delivers a kick to the gut now. Delivers a second. And now he's setting up. Oh, another uppercut! Right to the face. The jaw of Del Rio. And Del Rio's rocked. He's reeling. Here's Cesaro now. Looking to set him up. Oh, there's that Northern Light suplex. And, yep, he's going for it. Right directly into the Brain Buster. And Del Rio's in trouble now. Cesaro. He's got Del Rio on the ropes. On, and Cesaro's on the verge of victory. And look at this. Catapults him into the air. Into an uppercut. And that's it. Good night, Del Rio. Cover. Two. Three. We've got a new United States champion, folks. As Cesaro, the Swiss Superman, 
scores the win on Del Rio. And as we can see, a bit of highlights from earlier on in the matchup play. When Del Rio was setting him up for that super kick, we thought the neutralizer was going to put Del Rio out. And now look at this. Look at this move that Cesaro managed to pull seemingly out of nowhere. That superplex from the apron. And that was just a deadlift. There wasn't any leverage to help Cesaro out there. That was just his pure strength, his core power. And then, of course, the uppercut, the catapult uppercut that finished it all off. And now Cesaro can celebrate. He's the new United States champion. His journey to get to this point in his career has finally come to a conclusion. And Cesaro can safely say that he is now the new United States champion. It's been a long road for Cesaro, but he's finally made it. He's made it to the top of the mountain here on, well, he's made it to one of the peaks of the mountain, I should say. Maybe not the tip top, but this is definitely a huge, uh, huge point in Cesaro's career as he's now your new United States champion. And I gotta say, that was one heck of a kickoff match to start this pay-per-view off on the right foot. But this matchup, this is gonna be one for the ages, I believe, as we've got the two most powerful factions in the history of Universe Mode to date, as it is The Shield. Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose, Roman Reigns, taking on The Wyatt Family, led, of course, by none other than the master manipulator, the Eater of Worlds, Bray Wyatt, alongside the tag team champions, Eric Rowan and Luke Harper. And man, this matchup is gonna be a doozy. Considering it's a six-man tag team match, that ultimately means that this is already going to be a longer matchup than most, considering the fact that you've got three, you've got two teams of three superstars. So, to win the match, you essentially got to destroy each of your opponents. You got to break them down one by one in order to score the win. Now, as we saw back in the real WWE at Elimination Chamber, that matchup was. That was crazy. That was, in my opinion, the match of the year for 2014. And hopefully, here at WrestleMania, here in Universe Mode, this could be a candidate for a potential match of the year. Now, of course, this is going to be a bit of a long matchup. And I, of course, even did a promo for this one. So hopefully you checked that out and enjoyed it. So, you know, in the little description, I filled out the little backstory as to what's going on here. But to sum it all up, the Wyatt family, they've been on their path of destruction. You know, Bray Wyatt, he debuted way back prior to Night of Champions. He actually debuted at the SummerSlam pay-per-view, targeting Cesaro. Although, in the end, when all was said and done at Night of Champions, Cesaro defeated Bray Wyatt, seemingly vanquishing him from the face of the roster for quite some time. However, back in January, Bray Wyatt returned. And in the meantime, you know, prior to Bray Wyatt's return, Eric Rowan and Luke Harper, they had been carving their own path of destruction. As you can see, around their waist, that is proof of that. At No Way Out, they won the tag team titles. And since then, they've held the titles. And now that Bray Wyatt's come back, the Wyatt family, they've been more destructive than ever. And then, of course, we take a look at The Shield, who have been, ever since they debuted at the Over the Limit pre-show, back in May of the first calendar year of Universe Mode. The Shield have just been... Man, I mean, their destruction has been well documented. Their dominance over the locker room. They've defeated superstars, the likes of Daniel Bryan, Cesaro, The Undertaker, Kane. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. They have conquered so many superstars in this industry. You can also add Brock Lesnar to that list. Uh, yes, they did actually have a clash with Brock Lesnar at one point. And, of course... Then, of course, you have to add legends to that list. As I said, of course, way too many times. But the legends that The Shield has also gone through. The Undertaker can also be thrown into that list. Triple H. The NWO. Uh, Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, of course. Also, Hulk Hogan. The Rock. Stone Cold Steve Austin. That, that right there. I, I may have only named six legends, but that right there is a testament to the power that The Shield has as a group. Now, in terms of singles competition, you know, you can't say they're... You, you you can't really doubt them too much there. I mean, they may not have broken out on their own separate singles paths yet, but really, why do they need to? You see the success they've attained as a group. 
And even so, Dean Ambrose is a former WWE Champion. Seth Rollins has beaten some of the main event superstars on Monday Night Raw. It's amazing that Seth Rollins never got an opportunity at the WWE Championship. And then we've got Roman Reigns, who is a former United States Champion. He actually defeated, ending the long-standing reign of Jack Swagger back at No Way Out in a Fatal 4-Way. Now, Reigns may have lost the title back to Swagger a little bit later, but that still is a feat in its own right. I mean, Swagger held the title from Extreme Rules to No Way Out. At the time, it was the longest championship reign in Universe Mode, and Roman Reigns brought that to an end. So, I mean, in terms of their singles ability as well, you can never count out the Wyatt, or the Shield. As you can see right now, the Wyatt family and the Shield battling it out here on the outside. This is just pure chaos, and that's what's going to happen in this matchup. You have, I mean, you had Seth and Bray going at it. You had Harper and uh, Reigns going at it. You had Rowan and Ambrose. Now look at this, Ambrose is trying to fight Rowan off so he can get back in the ring to avoid being counted out here. And Harper, of course, he's re-entered the ring, just kind of waiting for Ambrose, looking to pick his spot as Ambrose gets back in the ring. Harper's going to shut him down, though, before he can mount any sort of offense. Nice sidewalk slam right there by Harper. And since this is a bit of a longer matchup, I want to take this time to address the lack of videos, or should I say the lack of universe mode videos, really over the past few weeks and continuing probably for the next couple of weeks. Because, just take a look at the length of this video for one thing. Uh, if you haven't seen my WrestleMania promo, I will just say that that one in particular, the one that covered all the matches, definitely took the most editing, because I really went in-depth with that. Because those promos are also an opportunity for me to kind of uh, grow and progress as a video editor, try to learn some new techniques, and try to make, you know, a flashy sort of build-up to the pay-per-view, you know, recount the rivalries leading up to it, and try to get everyone hyped for the show. I did also do one for this matchup, like I said, and one for the World Heavyweight Championship Triple Threat. Those two weren't quite as in-depth. I won't say that they were sloppy, or I mean, I won't say they're sloppy or, you know, they were a bit simpler. They're not, I mean, if you want to talk about simple, just take a look at some of my older work. Something like Capital Punishment, you know, the ones that aren't copyrighted. Because, I mean, when I started making the pay-per-view promos, I didn't, I didn't pay any attention to copyright. I mean, Over the Limit, for example, those pay-per-view promos, they, they've all got copyright. Uh, they're probably blocked in some countries, so you can't view them. Which is why I recommend Capital Punishment and Vengeance. Those were kind of mediocre, if you look back on it. But still, in comparison to my editing style now, the Shield and the World Heavyweight Championship 1 should have been a bit, a bit more simple. Uh, at the time I'm doing this commentary, because obviously, look at the length of the video, again, I have to bring it up again, because I have to break this commentary into parts, like I said in the last part, which was Cesaro and, um, Alberto Del Rio, so this one, I just want to say, you know, if, if anyone's complaining, you know, oh, you should upload more, or where's Wrestlemania, that, this is why, because, I mean, also think about it, before you want to complain about, oh, where's, when's the next episode of Universe Mode after Wrestlemania, the net. Think about it. Monday Night Raw and Friday Night SmackDown are both WWE draft events. So I just want to say, I'm not sure if I've officially stated it on Universe Mode in, in an episode. Pretty sure I have, but if I haven't, the WWE draft will be taking place following WrestleMania, and that's going to take some extensive editing in its own right. The episode of main, of main Event, probably not too much, so that one shouldn't be too much of a wait for following Raw. But the episode of SmackDown and the episode of Raw. I'm going to have to factor in all the draft events, the draft picks, and that sort of thing, which I'm really looking forward to, don't get me wrong, but it is probably going to take some time to edit, so before you go off and complain, when's the next episode of Universe Mode? It's probably going to be a little while, I, I want to say that. And also, if anyone's asking, well, I uploaded the Slammy Award nominees, so when is the Slammy Awards video going to be up? When am I going to, when are you going to be able to find out who won the Slammy Awards? Who is Superstar of the Year? Who's Faction of the Year? Because you gotta, you gotta think, this matchup could definitely, you know, the implications of this matchup, is, or the, blah, 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 if I can talk, the implications of that Slammy Award, I mean, what if, you know, what if the Wyatt family wins this tag team matchup, and maybe just, maybe they win Super, Superstar, maybe just, they win the Tag Team of the Year, I mean, they could just kind of, you know, be sort of an interesting sort of reflection on, I mean, this matchup, we're looking at two of the top tier tag teams, the two biggest powerhouse factions in Universe Mode in the first year. So, I mean, this matchup is, 
you know, I would have to say a reflection of two of the biggest tag teams. And, you know, following this matchup, it's kind of see. Um, I don't know where I would... Forget it. Let me drop that topic. I kind of had an idea where I was going for it, and I lost it. But the point is, Slammy Awards video. If you want to know when it's going to be taking place, when am I going to upload the Slammy Awards, you know, the results, episode 50 of Universe Mode. That is my goal. My plan is to make that a special episode, and I'm going to be including the Slammy Awards results throughout it. So maybe, maybe when I kick off the episode, we'll start out with say maybe I'll do like OMG moment of the year and then maybe after the first matchup I'll throw in some other Slammy Awards and we'll do that progressively throughout the episode to make it you know because Smackdown I don't feel like I've given enough love throughout the uh, the first year of Universe Mode I mean heck when it began there was no brand split and I feel like Smackdown was just kind of the second Raw for a little bit uh, not not too long but I just felt like you know the first month it wasn't really defined as its own brand but this time you know I mean because I've done I did like the rock and roll um, the drafts, you know, just some specials I've done in the past, I feel like have been a bit more Raw oriented. So this time around, I want to have the Slammy Awards be on SmackDown, which is why also it just kind of works out, because episode 50, kind of a landmark in the WWE 2K15 universe mode. So I think that'll be pretty cool. But now I'll take a look at who's in the ring. Roman Reigns and Bray Wyatt squaring off here. But yeah, I feel like that's everything I wanted to cover. The Slammy Awards will be episode 50, that is my plan anyway. And now, as we can see, Bray Wyatt really taking it to Roman Reigns at the moment. Covered by Bray Wyatt on Reigns off that big splash. One. No, kick up by Reigns. Not even a two count. Reigns just powers out of that one. And this is, an, this is a really cool clash in the ring right now. As we see the leader of the Wyatt family taking on the powerhouse of the Shield. Roman Reigns and Bray Wyatt going at it here. As we can see, look at Roman Reigns. That's a bit more technical that we would see from Reigns. But he's trying to work on the leg of Bray Wyatt there. Trying to find a body part, maybe try to stick to it, or maybe he's just trying to all around just destroy Bray Wyatt. And of course, Roman Reigns, I would think, the most out of the out of the shield at the moment, has the, um, he's got the most of a vendetta here in this matchup. I mean, of course, for the rest of the shield, they want to prove that they're the most dominant faction in the WWE, and the Wyatt family seems to be trying to take that claim, take that title away from them, and somehow it dropped by Reigns! But yeah, I would think, though, this matchup is more of a testament for Roman Reigns. This is kind of a statement match for him because Bray Wyatt came down to the ring and cost Roman Reigns the opportunity to enter the Shield into the Elimination Chamber for the WWE Championship. So Reigns, not only does he want some redemption against Bray Wyatt, and he's got to be really pissed with what Bray did, but Reigns got to be carrying a bit of weight on his shoulders after what happened because it was he was the one who had the opportunity to get the Shield into the Elimination Chamber, and he failed. Whether or not there was outside interference doesn't really matter. He let the shield down. So I think Roman Reigns here tonight, wait, look at this, Dean Arrows, catapults off the ropes into a clothesline! But Reigns, you gotta think, you know, he wants not only the redemption against Wyatt, but he wants to redeem himself in the eyes of his comrades, covered by Ambrose, kicked up by Wyatt. So as we can see at the moment now, we got the Lunatic Fringe taking on Bray Wyatt at the moment. Look at this, nice vertical suplex by Ambrose. But it's a bit different when you take a look at these two teams. When you look at the Wyatt family, it you can obviously tell who the leader is. It's very well defined. It's clear cut. The moment you take a look at this team, you can tell Bray Wyatt is the leader. He's the man with the plan. He's the one who pulls the strings. But when you take a look at the Shield, they're just such a well-knit group. They complement each other so well. You can't really find a weak link in the Shield. and You can't really ha find the strongest either. I mean... If you're talking literally, Roman Reigns. But if, you know, metaphorically, as in, like, who is the best superstar? I don't know what the heck is going on here. Look at, look at, what, what the heck is that? Oh, a nice reverse vertical suplex there from Rowan and Wyatt's covered by Rowan. Hooks the leg, but look at this. Reigns and Rollins get in there quickly to break that one up. I gotta be careful with that. That, I don't know if my mic might have just peaked there. But, I, like, every time a big move happens, I, like, lean in for some reason. And that doesn't really work well with my video editing because if I want to try to balance out the audio, it doesn't really work. Look at Dean Ambrose. Look at this. Building up a full head of steam. And I got to slow down my commentary for a little bit because I'm stumbling now. I'm getting sloppy. But Ambrose now in the ring with Eric Rowan here. But as I was saying with the shield, there really is no leader of the shield. So, oh, big splash there by Rowan. Goes into the cover on Ambrose once again. But here we go. Oh, no. 
Rollins didn't even need to get there. He was just a split second too late. Ambrose kicked out on his own. But with the Wyatt family, like I said, you can tell Bray is the leader. But as for the Shield, there really is no leader. Oh, and now Ambrose is in a whole lot of trouble. What a clothesline in the corner by Luke Harper. And now he's going to hook the leg, try to finish off Ambrose here. But there's Roman Reigns to break it up. And at this point, Dean Ambrose has taken a lot of punishment from all three members of the Wyatt family. Dean has got to make a tag. I mean, for the most part, this match has been back and forth. But at this stage of the game, Ambrose has taken quite a beating. And now look at Harper. Harper locking in a submission hold. He's got the Texas Cloverleaf here. Not something we see. Oh, what a big boot by Rowan. But as for Harper, we don't normally see submission holds in his arsenal. But here tonight, you know, you got to do whatever it takes. And now he nearly kicks Ambrose's head off with a big boot. Yet another cover, but there's Rollins to break it up. And that's what's going to happen in these six-man tag team environments. you got to make sure that you take out all three participants of your opposing team. You can't get the pin on Ambrose without taking out Rollins and Reigns. And now Ambrose takes out Eric Rowan. And now he's going after Harper, but Harper, he shuts that down real fast. Tries to shut down the rally. Snapmare takes down. Oh, what a big boot to the face once again of Dean Ambrose. But as I was trying to say, if I could just finish the point, with the Shield, they're, they're equals. There is no leader. And that's what makes them different from the Wyatt family. This, it's not like they're really looking at a reflection of each other. But it's more so, you know, they, own, they have their very own ways, uh, distinctive ways of getting to the top. You know, Bray Wyatt, he may be the leader. But still, the Wyatt family, they have their own unique elements individually. And that's what helps them succeed it helps them get to the top and Bray Wyatt ultimately you know even if you look at Harper and Rowan as just pieces to a puzzle or just pawns while Bray's the king Bray knows how to use his pawns to the utmost effectiveness so however you look at it ultimately they're successful so it really doesn't matter what their strategy is if you if you see it as more of a one man one man band or if you think of it if you think of Bray Wyatt just the leader with his lackeys, or if you think of them more so as equals, ultimately it doesn't matter, because it works. They find success. And here tonight we're going to find out, well, which method works better? Is the Wyatt family the stronger team, or is the shield the more destructive force? And now look at this Dean Ambrose counters into a side rush and light sweep. And this could be the opportunity for Ambrose to kind of gain the upper hand on Harper. And look at this, Dean Ambrose, he's going to do exactly that with the Ambrose stretch, as I'm just going to call it. And look at this. Harper could be on the verge of tapping out, but there's Rowan to break it up now. So the tides have turned as this time it's the Wyatt family breaking it up. Ambrose, though, after wearing out Harper, going to go for the cover, but Bray Wyatt gets in there to break it up. But Bray, Bray never really left the ring, I guess, so he, he just broke it up. And now Ambrose throws Harper over there into the corner. Big to Oh, he's going for the forearm, but Harper dodged. And now a nice running neck breaker by Harper. And in terms of a big man, Harper really can fly around that ring. He'll do suicide dives through the ropes and without even breaking a sweat, he'll barely bat an eye. So in terms of Harper, that's a very unique, you know, very unique, uh, I've lost the word I was going to say. He's a very unique superstar in his own right, as Ambrose delivers a spine buster. Eric Rowan now, or Ro Roman Reigns, he was going to, I can't talk now, I screwed myself up. But... Luke Harper takes out Dean Ambrose. Roman Reigns now out on the outside is Bray Wyatt. You know, he saw Reigns coming, so he just pulled down that rope, used Reigns' own momentum against him. As this is what's going to happen, we'll see little bits of chaos throughout this matchup. And now Reigns, while well, he was going after Rowan, who has now entered the ring. And Harper, though, he's going to capitalize on that distraction and take Roman Reigns down from behind with a back suplex. And Bray Wyatt getting back up on the apron over there. As you could tell, Harper was trying to go for a tag. Reigns, he tried to take the, he tried to make the preemptive strike, but Bray Wyatt, he saw it coming, and he scouted it out to perfection. But Reigns now, he just delivers a forearm to the face, and now I think he's setting up Luke Harper, perhaps looking for that Superman punch. Reigns, he's waiting, but look at this, Luke Harper though. Oh, Reigns got too cocky, and Harper makes a tag to Rowan. Rowan uppercut to Ray, Roman Reigns, and now he knocks Seth Rollins off the off the apron. And now the tides have turned, perhaps. Eric Rowan adding some new life into the Wyatt family's assault here. Power slam by Rowan. Cover on Reigns. But Reigns kicks out before even a one count. 
And I mean, just looking at the, the six superstars in the ring, Reigns is definitely the freshest man in that ring. And now look at Rowan. Rowan just delivering vicious headbutts to Dean Ambrose. But that did buy Rowan. Reigns some time to capitalize! And a spear out of nowhere by Reigns. Reigns hooks the leg on Rowan. We can have a victory here. One. No, Bray Wyatt gets in to break it up. And now look at Reigns. Whoa, he tried to take a shot at Wyatt. And now that's going to cost him as Luke Harper, he's going to take advantage. Delivers a leg drop and Reigns' throat getting caught across that middle rope. And that's definitely going to take the oxygen out of Roman Reigns for a little bit. Eric Rowan, this is his opportunity to get some offense in for the Wyatt family. As Roman Reigns, he's caught in a corner here. He did manage to strike Bray Wyatt down there. And look at this, delivering some punches to the face of Rowan. Or, or Reigns, he's got to get out of the Wyatt family's corner. But he fails to do so. As Rowan now has him over there in the corner. Placed him up on that top rope. What the heck is... No, counter by Reigns. He's up on the top rope. And Roman Reigns, a spear off the top rope. Roman Reigns with the spear takes out Rowan. Although Rowan managed to get back to his feet fairly quickly. And now off that DDT, I believe Roman Reigns just got busted open. Yes, he did. You can see the crimson mass over his forehead there. But Reigns still manages to kick out. And Roman Reigns now, this is his... You know, if he was looking for a test, he's got it right now. He's been busted open. And now he's in the corner of the Wyatt family. Well, more so in the center of the ring, but I mean, it's the Wyatt family's ball game now. They've got the advantage. Reigns going to try to make a tag, but Bray Wyatt shuts him down, taking him out with an STO. And now here's Bray Wyatt. He knows he's got Reigns down. You know, he sees water, he smells blood. What? Sees water, what the heck? I don't know what I'm saying. But Bray Wyatt now, he's got Roman Reigns. He smells blood, is what I was trying to say. And now back body drop to Roman Reigns. And that's what happens in these kind of matchups, you know? Things happen, chaos breaks out, and I get a bit disoriented. And now look at this, Bray Wyatt with a submission hold could try to make Reigns tap here, but it doesn't matter. Who knows what was gonna happen because Rollins and Ambrose get in to break it up. And now Roman Reigns measuring Bray Wyatt, delivers a knee to the face directly. Could have possibly broken Wyatt's nose with that one. And now look at Reigns, he's picking up Bray Wyatt, slams him down. And now look at this, just driving the knee into the back, the spine of Bray Wyatt. And now Roman Reigns, he's measuring Bray, going for the Superman punch right to the jaw of Bray Wyatt. And oh my goodness, Roman Reigns, Seth and Dean have entered the ring, and they're looking to set up Bray Wyatt for the triple powerbomb. And now look at this, they've got him up there, and triple powerbomb to Bray Wyatt. Reigns, or Rowan and Harper really couldn't do much except to watch because otherwise, you know, more chaos would have broken out and I don't think that would have worked out very well for the family if they had tried to break that up. But Ambrose now gets tossed over the top rope to the outside. Bray Wyatt though counters and he's got Reigns in the corner, delivers an elbow to the skull and now he continues several vicious elbows right to the side of the head of Reigns and now some Owen drop right there to Bray Wyatt as we had to fast forward a little bit to keep this, you know, the best possible quality for YouTube in terms of a match. Super kick right to the gut of Bray Wyatt and Roman Reigns. He's looking to finish off Bray Wyatt. He's going for the spear. He's looking to finish off Bray for good. Roman Reigns sets up the spear, but Bray blocked it and now counters with a punch to the face and a huge cross body. Bray Wyatt just launching himself like a cannonball at Roman Reigns. Goes for the cover. One, two, not even a two count. Reigns kicks out. And in case you're wondering, oh my god, he cut stuff out of the match. Nothing really important happened. So just to let you know, I didn't cut out anything huge. But look at this. So, uh, speaking of something huge, Bray Wyatt, oh my god. No way. Bray Wyatt's not going to do this. He's got Reigns up on the top rope. Bray Wyatt, a superplex to the floor. You have got to be kidding me. Bray Wyatt sacrificing everything here tonight to try to put Roman Reigns away. And now Rowan, he's gonna get Reigns into the ring. Bray Wyatt, if he can just cover Roman Reigns, he's got the victory in the bag here. Somehow, Reigns back to his feet. I don't see how that's possible. How the hell is Roman Reigns back on his feet? How is he still standing? And somehow he's managing to mount some offense as well. Nice power bomb by Reigns. You know, Roman Reigns, is he gonna go for attack? No, Reigns is looking to finish it off. He's got a score to settle with Bray Wyatt, and he's going to do just that. Measuring Bray Wyatt for the spear! 
Roman Reigns connects with the spear. Broke Bray Wyatt in half. Dean Ambrose, he's taking out the trash. Knocks Eric Rowan off the ropes there. Reigns gonna go for the cover. Dean takes out Harper. Cover, one, two, three, and we have got a winner. The Shield defeat the Wyatt family. What a matchup that was between those two teams. They put it all on the line. They left nothing. I mean, they left it all in that ring. Bray Wyatt, Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins, Luke Harper, Eric Rowan. What a matchup that was between those six competitors. But in the end, it's clear that the Shield owned this yard. The Hounds of Justice reign supreme once again, and for the first time ever, at WrestleMania. And we've hit the 40 minute mark here in this pay-per-view and that was only two matches. We've still got six more matches to go here on WrestleMania. And I think it's appropriate that after we follow up that matchup with the most destructive tag team over the course of the past year, we follow it up with one of the most destructive superstars here over the first course of the first year of universe mode. And here tonight is for the Intercontinental Championship. Fatal four-way style, Ryback defends his title against three of the top competitors on SmackDown as Ryback takes on Cody Rhodes, Darren Young, and Titus O'Neil. Now Ryback, he has been a dominant champion. No one has been able to get that championship off of him ever since he won the belt way back at SummerSlam when he defeated Christian, who in his own right had a very long title reign as well. Christian, much like Swagger, won the goal at Extreme Rules. So Christian, in his own right, had a pretty extensive reign as the Intercontinental Champion. But Ryback, he's topped that. He's topped Swagger's reign. He's topped Christian's reign. Ryback has been the longest reigning champion in Universe Mode to date. But tonight, that could all come crashing down. Because while Ryback has held the championship since SummerSlam, he has never had to defend the title in a matchup like this. Every matchup that Ryback has defended it in, it has been a one-on-one -on -one matchup. So Ryback, he has just been able to simply better... He's... Yeah, excuse me. He's been the better opponent, he's been the better man, and he's been able to best his opponents. But tonight, that's not that might not be enough. Because it's a fatal four-way. Ryback does not have to be involved in the decision whatsoever. So let's say this man, Cody Rhodes, Let's say he hits a crossroads on Titus O'Neil. One, two, three, new Intercontinental Champion, Cody Rhodes. Now, Ryback wasn't involved in the decision, but yet he loses the title. This is Ryback's biggest challenge to date. This could be the biggest opportunity, perhaps the only opportunity, that somebody can get the Intercontinental Championship away from Ryback. Because in singles matches, I mean, just take a look at the course of the past month. At Elimination Chamber, Cody Rhodes challenged Ryback one-on-one -on -one for the title. And although he definitely took the fight to Ryback, Cody Rhodes was not successful. Ryback, in the end, was still able to put him away with, you know, I don't know. I would say ease, but then again, Ryback has been an interesting case. Because we take a look back at Night of Champions, where he kicked out of three kill switches to retain the title. He hasn't really been pushed to that capacity since then. One could argue that Ryback hasn't been pushed to his limits. Maybe he's grown complacent since that time. So perhaps, you know, Ryback, he's not as strong as he used to be, or maybe he's stronger than ever. Maybe I'm reading too much into this. But the point is, Ryback, it doesn't matter how strong he is, if he, he has to have eyes in the back of his head. He has to keep his eye on all three of his opponents at all times. He has to be constantly aware of what's going on. So let's say all three of them gang up on Ryback. All three of them go after Ryback and they get him out of this matchup fairly early. Then, you know, Ryback, there's not much he can do about that. He's just gotta make sure that he's in the ring at all times and that he's got the advantage at all times. As you can see right now, definitely has the upper hand on Darren Young. And true, Ryback has defeated all three of these men in singles competition over the course of the past month. But, like I said, Fatal 4-Way, it's, it's a completely different ball game. Ryback does not have to be pinned or submitted to lose the title. So this is Ryback's biggest challenge. And I feel like I've said that too many times, but that it is. I mean, you can't really 
There's no sugarcoating it. it. It just is. It is what it is. You could argue it, but I don't think it'd be a very convincing argument. So now as we take a look here. Oh, what a clothesline there by Ryback. As you can see right now, Ryback, he's just going after everybody. Look at this. Shoulder switch power slam there to Cody Rhodes. I mean, Ryback, he's gone after Darren Young. He's gone after Titus. And now, now he goes head-to-head -head with Cody Rhodes. And, I mean, we just take a look at the three superstars challenging Ryback for the title. I mean, we've got Darren Young and Titus O'Neil. The primetime players were arguably the number three tag team over the course of the past year. I mean, we take a look, of course, the Shield Wide family. They've got to be, they've got to be number one and two. But if you're looking at a team that hasn't won the tag team titles, that isn't the Shield, because the Shield is a complete exception. I mean, the Shield, I don't even think it's fair to put them in the same category of people who have never won the tag team titles, just because, you know, they've had opportunities that no one else has. They've gone up against legends, icons in the business. But with the primetime players, you know, they had a long road to try to get to the tag team titles. I mean, they crossed paths with tons of funk, who became a huge thorn in their side until finally the primetime players put them, they put them to bed, managed to get the victory, but in the end, they still couldn't defeat the Wyatt family for the tag team titles when, when all was said and done. When, it, when the titles were on the line, they just fell a bit short. And in the end, Titus O'Neil, he just couldn't deal with it anymore. He felt that Darren Young was the weak link, and so he severed his ties with Darren Young and defeated him at Elimination Chamber. However, Darren Young had defeated Titus O'Neil twice before, so Darren Young, he still felt that he had a convincing argument that he is still the stronger half of the primetime players. And after the brawl that ensued on episode 31 of Universe Mode, these two men, you know, it was decided by Triple H that everybody, Cody Rhodes, all three of these men challenging for Ryback would get their opportunity. Cody Rhodes has had a long journey as well, although his has been more clear cut, well defined, I mean, he was in the match. He was the one pinned by Christian at Extreme Rules to lose the Intercontinental title. Even though The Miz may have been the champion, I mean, that's even a good reference point as to what can happen in a matchup like this where there's more than... Look at this. Wait a minute. Titus O'Neil. Clash of the Titus on Cody Rhodes. That could be it, folks. Titus hooks the leg. One, two. No, Ryback just gets in to break it up in the last second. And it can't get any closer than that. That's just... A good example of what Ryback is going to be dealing with in this matchup. Now, Cody Rhodes, well, he was going after Titus, but Ryback, you know, Ryback, he saw Titus O'Neil as the biggest threat, and now he's looking to take him down. Bulldog right there by Cody Rhodes to Darren Young. Ryback now up on that second rope. Cody Rhodes springboards into the ring, although Darren Young dodges. And now Titus O'Neil working on the leg of Ryback, and Darren does the same as Cody Rhodes. You know, great minds think alike, I suppose. Two count by Darren, kick out by Cody Rhodes. You know, they've been tag team partners for so long, so, you know, they have similar strategies. They know each other. And all the, out of the four men in this matchup, and, oh, oh, bleh, I can't speak now. But when you take a look at Titus and Darren Young, they know each other more than any of the other superstars in this matchup know each other. So, you know, if anybody's going to, I mean, like I said before, Darren Young, he may not want the Intercontinental Championship. And look at this, though. He's definitely taking the fight to Ryback. I don't think Darren Young would mind if he won the title as he takes out uh, right out there. But he could very well just be here to try to thwart Titus O'Neil's uh, attempt to win the Intercontinental title. Look at Titus, though. He's setting up Cody Rhodes with a nice shoulder breaker there. Darren Young, though, he's taking the fight to Ryback. Now look at Titus. Counter by Cody. Pinfall attempt by Darren. Take it by Ryback. And now this is what happens. It's a fatal four. The action's going to be tough to call. Covered by Rhodes. Kick out by Titus. And that's what's going to happen. These pinfalls can happen all over the place. You gotta keep your eye out. You gotta be on guard. Keep your eye out. Nice running STO there by Titus. He did use that move to defeat Cody or Kofi a few weeks ago. Two count. Titus O'Neil has won the Intercontinental Championship with that STO that he did use to defeat Cody. Cody. What am I saying? Why do I keep saying Cody? Kofi Kingston on main event a few weeks ago. And he, as you can tell, he did hit the clash of Titus early on. So Cody Rhodes, he was already weakened by that point. Titus, in the end, that was just the straw that broke the camel's back. And the story here is not that Titus O'Neil has won the Intercontinental Championship. I mean, that's a that's going to be probably what's on, you know, all the newspapers. It's going to be on WWE.com. It's going to be everywhere that Titus O'Neil is your new Intercontinental Champion. But I think the bigger, if I'm looking at the bigger picture here, Ryback has just lost the Intercontinental Championship, and he was not pinned. He was not submitted. 
He was not involved in the decision. And this is exactly what I've been telling you the past several weeks, that this was Ryback's biggest challenge, and ultimately, he just couldn't measure up. The real deal, Titus O'Neil is. He's just proved that he is the real deal. And he's now your Intercontinental Champion. Well, it's time, after, on that note, it's time we move on to the Divas Championship matchup here tonight. A rematch from the Elimination Chamber. Summer Rae cashes in her rematch clause to take on Brie Bella here tonight. And man, this this WrestleMania, I mean, let's take a look at what's gone down so far. We've had two title changes and the Shield defeating the Wyatt family. So I'd have to say, Brie Bella, you know the numbers don't lie. The past two matchups that have been for titles, the titles changed hands. So perhaps tonight, the same could be in the cards for Brie Bella. Maybe Summer Rae. Maybe, maybe this is just Summer Rae's night. She could have just been a bit off at Elimination Chamber. And maybe perhaps Summer Rae, she's going to win back that title here tonight. I mean, so far, in terms of what's gone down earlier on in the pay-per-view, I'd say the odds are in Summer Rae's favor, considering both titles that have been defended so far have changed hands. But then again, Brie Bella, she might break that pattern. She could be the first champion to retain the title here tonight. But we're just going to have to wait to find out. Summer Rae, though, as I've said in the past, out of all the Divas Champions so far, Summer Rae is by far the most arrogant Divas Champion we've had. And that could perhaps be why she held the title for the least amount of time in comparison to all the other Divas Champions. Because, you know, she's got that confidence, but she may have underestimated her opponents at Elimination Chamber. And that's why Brie Bella's the champ here tonight. Because Brie Bella... She hit the Bella Buster on AJ, but in the end, she rolled up Summer Rae for the pin. It wasn't a case of the Intercontinental Championship here tonight where the champ wasn't pinned. In that matchup, Brie Bella did pin Summer Rae. Summer Rae, she got caught napping, and in the end, it was Brie Bella who scored the win. So, really, Summer Rae can't make that argument that she wasn't pinned, because she was. And that could perhaps just make her even more furious at the events that took place and make her just more desperate to win this title because now she knows that Brie has beaten her once and now it's Summer Rae's job to try to prove the WWE Universe and prove to herself that she can beat Brie Bella the second time around. As we can see, there was a nice bit of chain grappling there. As we try to see, oh, a nice drop kick there to the face by Brie Bella. But they were both just kind of sizing each other up, trying to see who can get the upper hand. You know, it's also a bit of mind games as well with that chain grappling. You know, you see who's got the upper hand early on. At the moment, it looks like Brie Bella is going on the offensive first. Delivers those elbows right to the shoulder blade of Summer Rae. Not the shoulder blade, just the shoulder. But Summer Rae counters with a nice knee lift to the gut. And now Brie's gonna counter into a side Russian leg sweep. And now we take a look here. Nice leg drop there by Brie Bella. And I hope you all have been enjoying the pay-per-view so far. You know, this is probably the matchup where I would think most people would tune out just because it's like, oh, it's a Divas match, so piss break. I don't know, because that seems like what the WWE Divas division has been recently. And I know some universe modes out there don't use the Divas. They just go with straight-up superstars. They ignore the women's division, the women's wrestlers. But that's not what I'm about. I, f I know these women have talent, and that's why I want to showcase it here in universe mode. I want to pick up where the WWE has kind of dropped the ball. I want to show the world that these women do have talent and that they just haven't been properly utilized. I mean, we've seen with people like AJ that they do have talent. Natalia as well. I mean, some of the some of the women have gotten their spotlight. You know, they've been able to prove themselves. But some of them, you know, the fairly newer ones haven't exactly got that opportunity. And that's what the women's division here in Universe Mode is for. So if you are still sticking around by this point in the video, um, leave a comment down below. Divas Championship. No, that's, that's actually, you know, that doesn't really mean much. How about, leave a comment down below, blonde hair. Because every Divas champion prior to Brie Bella had blonde hair. That's such a random thing to say, I know, but it'll tell me who is watching the pay-per-view at this point, who really has been sticking it out for the video. And also, I guess, let me know down below if you plan on watching the rest of the episode, or maybe you just got lucky, you happened to watch this matchup, and, you know, maybe you were only going to watch, like, the first half and then skip something, but... You know, I, w I would like you to be honest. If you're going to watch the whole pay-per-view, be sure to let me know down in the comments section. Maybe, just maybe, I'll put another little code word 
later on in the video, but uh, I'm not gonna say whether or not that's gonna happen. I'll probably forget anyway. But Brie Bella, Bella Buster, right there to Summer Rae. And Summer Rae's championship hopes could have just gone up in smoke to Brie Bella is still the WWE Divas Champion. Brie Bella, in the end, just proving that she is the better diva out of these two. And she is the better champion out of these two. You can see Brie Bella, she's got her own ego, but she hasn't let that go to her head. Summer Rae, it feels like she, you know, she's the younger talent, so she kind of just let it go to her head. She let the success go to her head. But with Brie Bella here tonight, you know, she was no nonsense. Took the fight right to Summer Rae, and that's why she is the winner here tonight. So Brie Bella, she can celebrate that she is the Divas Champion. So after yet another championship has changed hands, it would appear as though tonight is the night of the challenger, which I guess would play into this man's favor, as Daniel Bryan looks for revenge, redemption, against the Beast Incarnate, Barack Lesnar from their encounter at the Royal Rumble, which Bryan lost on the receiving end of two F5s. So Daniel Bryan, like I was saying earlier, I mean, we've already seen the United States Intercontinental and no that was actually it those were the two titles that changed hands and we also saw the shield defeat the Wyatt family and of course the Divas Championship was retained so far the only championship to be retained here tonight but at the moment like I was saying that plays into the favor of the challenger and I guess if you were to look at this at more of a champion and challenger standpoint I would have to say Brock Lesnar would take the role of the champion, Daniel Bryan, the role of the challenger. As Bryan, he's already faced Lesnar once before. Lesnar scored the win. So Bryan, he's here. He's, you know, in terms of momentum, Daniel Bryan is on the lower half. He's on the lower end of the scale. As Brock Lesnar, he's already beaten Bryan once. So that's just going to give him a bit of a confidence boost. And, I mean, it just shows that Lesnar, at the Royal Rumble, was the better man. He had the better ability and he had what it took to put Brian away. But tonight is a different night. Tonight is WrestleMania. The night of all nights where these superstars will give it their A game and they'll go that extra 10% beyond their normal capacity. This is where they dig down deep and you know, they just seem to kick it into a whole nother gear. But will that even be enough for Dana Bryan to conquer the Beast Incarnate here tonight on WrestleMania. Now look at this. Dana Bryan takes out the referee as Lesnar ducked the incoming strike by Bryan. So that's that's one way to kick this matchup off. As it's not really too huge of a deal. It is a no holds barred contest. So tonight there are no rules between these two men. I mean, obviously there has to be a pinfall or submission in the ring, but but there's no count outs, no disqualification, no opening for a screwy finish between these two. So they're just going to have to fight each other, beat each other down until neither, until either one of them cannot answer the call. And now look at this, Brock Lesnar going for a submission hold, looking to try to wear Dana Bryan out here in the early stages. Although if Bryan were to tap out at this stage, it wouldn't matter because the, well, the referee's back to his feet now, but earlier, it, it doesn't even matter at this point. But Dana Bryan, look at this counter by Lesnar as he tosses Dana Bryan away here. And Lesnar, well, this is his type of environment. He especially enjoys these no-holds-barred environments. So he's going out to the outside, going for a weapon. Dana Bryan tried to drop kick him, but Lesnar was able to get out of the way. He's going to try to go for the cover, but Bryan kicks out. As that is a pretty, pretty ugly landing off that missed drop kick. So it was, you know, not too strange of an idea there for Lesnar to try to go for the cover off of that. At least try to wear Bryan out a little bit more, try to force him to expend some energy after already basically getting the wind knocked out of him by missing the dropkick. Although Bro Lesnar did have a kindo stick earlier, but he's already tossed to the floor. And now look at Brian. Brian with a sleeper hole. He's trying to wear Lesnar out here. But Lesnar, though, I think he's going to power out of this pretty pretty quickly here. And that's exactly what he's doing, is he just tosses Brian over his head and off of him. So Lesnar escapes the hold fairly quickly there. Now, But Brian, though, he's going to try to go after the leg now of Lesnar. And... If we're looking at this from, you know, what are we going to see out of these two participants? Well, I would think Daniel Bryan, he's going to be doing what he's doing right now. Isolating a body part and then trying to soften it up with a submission hold. 
we, we should definitely see a lot of submissions out of Dana Bryan here tonight. Because that is one of the reasons that, one of the things that brought him to the dance here. Lesnar, on the other hand, you know, he can also bust out some, some submission holds. But I would think he'll just go from more of a brawler's powerhouse standpoint. Where he'll just try to rush Bryan. Oh, he's got a ladder here. So obviously Lesnar, he's going to be the, mo the more weapons-oriented superstar in this matchup. And now look at this. Brian was trying to pick up the ladder, but Lesnar picks it back up. Takes it from Brian's grasp. And now delivers a shot to the face with that steel ladder. Well, Lesnar now he's setting it up there. Maybe Nope, going to go for the cover on Brian, but Brian kicks out once again. And of course, at the Royal Rumble, we did see a ladder get implemented. And we saw tables. I mean, really, Lesnar, I mean, he is the more weapons-oriented type, type of superstar. So bringing in all these weapons, all these toys to the mix definitely going to play to his favor. And now look at this. Brian, though, well, he's just turned the tables as he took Lesnar out with that ladder. And now Brian, he's going to want to get that thing out of here. In terms of a pure wrestling matchup, I would have to say Dana Brian would have the advantage. He's the more technical superstar. Like I said, well-versed in submissions. So Dana Brian, if it comes down to a pure wrestling matchup, I would think that would be Brian's best opportunity. The best odds that he would be able to defeat Lesnar here tonight. But as he went for a drop kick, Lesnar sidestepped it, but Brian though, right back to his feet, and was continuing to go on the, off on the offensive. And Brian now has Lesnar in the corner, but Lesnar counters with a nice boot to the face. But Brian, you know, he's still fighting back, as it's just back and forth between these two now. There's a shot to the back, right in between the shoulder blades of Dana Brian. Lesnar now, he's gonna pull him back. Oh, and now a nice club, a clubbing shot in between the shoulder blades once again of Brian. Goes for yet another cover. This time only a one count. Brian kicks out fairly, fairly comfortably, but still, Lesnar trying to wear Brian out with these pinfalls. These pinfall attempts, not a bad strategy by Lesnar. So he brings the ladder back in the ring, but Brian is going to take Lesnar out once again with that ladder. And Brian playing into that strategy, getting all the weapons out of the ring. As he wants to just make this a pure wrestling match. Just look at this roll of a Lesnar. Brian could have him, but no, Lesnar quickly kicks out of that one at one. Brian now with a nice kick to the face. Went for the Enziguri, but Lesnar sidestepped it. And now Brock Lesnar. There are some of those haymaker shots, but Brian fights back with one of his own, trying to fight Lesnar off here. And now back suplex right there, taking down Lesnar. So at the moment, Dana Bryan, he's holding his own. And now look at this, another, another submission hold. The Dragon Sleeper this time. Continues to try to wear down Lesnar. Try to soften him up, perhaps, for the yes lock later on in the matchup. But Lesnar counters... And delivers a knee right to the gut of Brian. Now he's going to pick him up for that backbreaker. And now once again, another cover by Lesnar as he's trying to wear Brian out here. Two count, but a kick out by Daniel Bryan. Close call there. As you can see that as this match goes on, Lesnar is slowly but surely picking apart Daniel Bryan. He's wearing him down. Brian is not kicking out as quickly as he was at the beginning of this matchup. As there's yet another cover by Lesnar. Brian... That time, though, disproves everything I was saying by kicking out quickly there. But Lesnar didn't really hit much of a move prior to that, so I don't, I don't know. I think it's safe to assume that Brian had a fairly easy kick out there. Well, he tried to take Lesnar out with a suicide dive there off the off the apron, but he also did some damage to himself as Lesnar was trying to go for those steel steps, but now Brian has him in hand. This is not looking good for Lesnar as Brian's... Oh, no. Lesnar blocked it with a nice elbow to the face. And here's Lesnar. German suplex taken down Brian out on the floor as well. So, I mean, Le Brian getting dropped on the back of his head. That's not looking too good for Brian as Brian could perhaps sustain some sort of injury, perhaps a concussion from this matchup. And Lesnar now, he's just zeroing in on the head, bouncing Brian face first off the announce table. Now takes him down with an STO. So, once again... The whiplash on Brian. Slowly, I would think that's going to start to take effect as Lesnar rolls him into the ring, but he's going back for yet another weapon. So we can tell that Lesnar here tonight is just out to destroy Dana Bryan, to just pick him apart. There's another haymaker shot. Went for the clothesline. Bryan ducked it, though. And now Dana Bryan picking Lesnar up. Takes him down with a nice scoop slam. And Dana Bryan, I mean, what a back and forth matchup this has been between these two superstars. Dana Bryan, he's got Lesnar, Northern Lights suplex, and he bridges it into a pin attempt. Two count, no, but Lesnar kicks out at two and a half. Close call there for Lesnar. So Lesnar also showing the effects of this matchup. He's starting to get worn down. And Dana Bryan, look at this, hatch, hatch suplex there as he sends Lesnar flying. 
Daniel Bryan's got Lesnar measured center of the ring here. Oh, and he kicks out the leg of Lesnar. And we know what this is going to set up is Bryan now just viciously kicking away at the chest of Lesnar here, taking out all his aggression on the Beast Incarnate. Now one on the side of the head, a beautiful roundhouse. I mean, that could knock Lesnar out here. But Brian, he's gonna look to go for the finishing blow as he sets him up for the yes lock here. He's going for it and he's got it locked in. Lesnar could be on the brink of defeat here as Brian's he's really got it cinched in here. Lesnar, he, he can't quite get to those ropes. He may be forced to tap out unless he can somehow power his way out of this thing. Brian is really wrenching back here, but Lesnar somehow, someway manages to survive. Brian had to break the hold as Lesnar really wasn't showing any signs of wearing down. Lesnar was not going to tap out here. So Dana Bryan, he's got to find some other way to put Lesnar away here. Lesnar once again goes for the cover. Two count. Bryan kicks out, though. As I was saying, Bryan, you can see now just crawling. He's really, I mean, that yes lock took a lot out of him. He really was applying the pressure to that one. But look at this. Brock Lesnar now going on the offensive for one of his signature maneuvers. As he's going to set up the combination of Three power bombs. There's the third and final power bomb. Cover on Brian. Two count. Three. No. Kick out at the last second there by Brian. And just to keep himself alive here. But Lesnar once again another strike and another one in the face of Brian. Brock Lesnar once again going to pick Brian up. Nice backbreaker there. And Lesnar he's going to crawl into the cover here, but you can see he's getting worn down. Lesnar, you know, this is taking a lot out of him. He's not, he's not as quick back to his feet as he was. He's now he's just measuring Brian, waiting for him to get to his feet. He's going for the F5, perhaps. Got him up on his shoulders, but Brian shifts the weight in, into a DDT right there. Excuse me for that. As Lesnar was going for the F5, Lesnar now, or Brian turning the tides in his favor as he goes to the top rope. This time he hits the diving headbutt on Brock Lesnar. And Daniel Bryan, I think he's got Lesnar here. And he's setting him up for the he's setting him up for the running a high knee. And he sets him up and he hits it. Daniel Bryan with the knee to the face, busting Lesnar open. One, two, three. Daniel Bryan has finally defeated the beast incarnate Brock Lesnar here tonight. And it was a long road for Daniel Bryan. He had been on this journey, this clash with Paul Heyman, the authority, ever since. The Vengeance pay-per-view. Brian, for the longest time, the authority had just been a huge thorn in his side, just holding Brian back, not allowing him to reach his potential. But finally, after several months, after well over half a year, Dana Bryan has finally overcome the biggest obstacle in his career so far. He has defeated Brock Lesnar. And it was a clean matchup. Brian, he got the weapons out of the ring. He wanted to keep it a fair wrestling match, and that's exactly what Daniel Bryan did. And he clearly showed that on this night, when Daniel Bryan could shift the match more in his favor, Bryan was the better man. He was the better wrestler, and that's why he wins here tonight. We saw what happened at the Royal Rumble, where he was more, it was more so of a match in Lesnar's element. But tonight at WrestleMania, Bryan, he, he made this match his, I mean, he really controlled this matchup. He turned it into his yard, his match. And for that, I think that's the reason why he won. Brian was just, he was able to control this matchup a bit more, keep the weapons out of it for the most part. And I I think that was the deciding factor. That's what allowed Brian to get the victory here tonight, is he was able to take better control of the matchup. But now it's time, I mean, we just saw Brian gets the win, so that's another superstar overcoming obstacles. Christian, the World Heavyweight Champion here tonight, he's got a huge obstacle, defending his title in a triple threat match, which means he has a two-thirds chance of losing his championship. He's got a 66.6 chance, well, 66.67. Approximately, you gotta round it, of course, because it's one of those repeating decimals, but... Christian, the odds are not in his favor. That's less than half. Christian, I mean, his odds are not good. He's, I mean, if there was ever a time that any champion could be in jeopardy, we saw we saw how the numbers played into the Fatal 4-Way earlier with Ryback. Ryback, a man who had held the Intercontinental Championship since SummerSlam, 
who had crushed anybody in his way prior to tonight. Even he was defeated by the odds. So we saw Titus O'Neil capture the Intercontinental Championship. And also, that's a SmackDown title. And in terms, I mean, we look at the titles so far, two thirds of the titles that have been defended have changed hands. The only title that has not changed hands was the Divas Championship. But the US and the Intercontinental title, you know, they've got new owners, they've got new homes, we've got new champions. So perhaps the same could. And the numbers don't lie, so they do not play in Christian's favor. So this is probably the best chance for somebody like Edge or Mark Henry to win. Christian, he does not have to be pinned. He does not have to be submitted. He does not have to be involved in the decision to lose the title. I basically went over the majority. You know, I've gone over most of what this kind of a matchup entails for the Fatal 4-Way. So I don't really feel a need to go to go over much else in detail, um, considering you know I'm expecting the majority of my audience to be sitting through this video or to, you know, if it's a SmackDown title, so I would think if you're gonna watch the World Heavyweight Championship match, I would assume that you have already watched the Intercontinental Championship match. But if you haven't, you know, I, w I won't say that I don't expect people to just skip to certain matches because you know it's a long pay-per-view. It, it's understandable that you would move on. You know, maybe you don't have a free almost two hours to watch pay-per-view, so, you know, maybe you just watch what you want to see. It makes sense, but still, I don't really feel the need to repeat the same kind of topic, the same discussion twice in the same video. So, let's focus in more on the backstory leading up to this one, as Mark Henry, former World Heavyweight Champion, he won the title back at Night of Champions. Actually, no. He won the King of the Ring Tournament at Night of Champions. My mistake. Which earned him a shot at the title at No Way Out. Which he won, defeating Sheamus. And Mark Henry held the title ever since. All the way up to the Elimination Chamber, where he was eliminated from the match by the Rated R Superstar Edge. Later in the matchup, Christian went on to hit Jericho with a kill switch. One, two, three new world champ, Christian. You know, you could definitely give an assist to Edge, who got the biggest threat, arguably, in Mark Henry out of that matchup. So Christian, he was able to capture the gold. You know, taking on the role, almost Edge's role, of the ultimate opportunist. It was just Christian's time. The odds, not the odds, but you know, the circumstances played in his favor. And he was able to capture the World Heavyweight Championship by the end of the night. And then you know, not to say that Christian can't defeat Mark Henry on his own, because granted, there was a bit of an assault beforehand. Christian rushed the ring and attacked Mark Henry off guard before the match began. But still, Christian was able to defeat Mark Henry, which is not something a lot of superstars can say they've done. I mean, you take a look in the past, what it's taken to put Henry away. I mean, it's just taken count... It's taken countless upon countless of finishers as Henry, I mean... Even against John Cena on, an epi on episode 36 of 2K15 Universe Mode a uh, week ago or so, in terms of the calendar year, of course. Mark Henry, I mean, he kicked out of two attitude adjustments. So, I mean, Mark Henry, he's quite the destructive force. He's got a hell of a lot of endurance and a lot of just power. So, as you can see in this matchup, Edge and Christian trying to work together to take out Henry. But Henry has just been going all out against these two. They, you know, he's just kind of swatting them away like flies. But of course, it is a triple threat matchup. So as we can see right now, Edge and Christian, they are going after each other. Although, I, I th would think that, you know, for the for at least the early stage of this matchup, they should be working together to take out Henry. But it is every man for themselves. Or every man for themselves. So while you may have a temporary alliance in... In the end, in the grand scheme of things, it, that means nothing. Friendships, they don't really mean a damn thing in this kind of matchup because all these superstars want to be champion. They don't enter this business to make friends. They're in it to become a success. I mean, you just happen to make friends along the way. And even so, even if something would go down between Edge and Christian here tonight, I mean, they've been friends for over a decade. They've been friends for a long time. So I would think I wouldn't expect a world championship to just end their friendship. I mean, they understand what's at stake. 
They know what the opportunity is here tonight, so I would think, you know, they have a bit of empathy for each other. So say if Edge gets an opportunity and pins Christian, you know, Christian, I don't think he would be that angry because if the opportunity came up for Christian, he would do the same thing. And as for Mark Henry, well, none of that even matters. Mark Henry, he doesn't care about either of these two superstars. He just wants to destroy both of them and induct them into the Hall of Pain and walk out with the World Heavyweight Championship. That's Mark Henry's agenda. But as you can see right now, he's in hes in trouble. Edge and Christian, they're working together to take Henry out. And that's, that's the best strategy they can employ here in this matchup. Look at this nice double gut buster there taking Henry down. But yeah, Christian, he did manage to score a victory on Mark Henry on SmackDown. Although, it took a spear into a kill switch. Wait, look at this. Covered by Christian off the execution. Henry kicks out, though, at two. But that's just sort of an instance of you got to take your opportunities when they show up. That's a bit of an instance is what we could see later on tonight in this matchup. As Edgy hit the execution, Christian, he tried to sneak in for the pin. I mean, the same could happen. Christian could hit one of his signature maneuvers, and Edge could try to go for the pin. You never know. You, that's why you always got to have an eye in the back of your head. You got to keep an eye on that third man. As you can see, Edge has his back turned, covered by Henry, but a kick out by Christian. And right there, that's an instance. It only takes three seconds to win the match. So you could be dominating for the majority of the matchup, but then something happens. You don't have a close eye on your opponent. Maybe you're taking too long to recover. The other guy could just sneak in and score the victory on the third man. And after all that work, all that blah, 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 after all that hard work, you could wind up with nothing. That's how these kind of matches work. Right now, Edge appears to have the upper hand. Henry, though, he's going to try to sneak in for the cover, but Edge breaks it up. As you can see, Edge is going to throw Henry into that corner. So at the moment, the upper hand, I don't know. I mean, all of these superstars seem to have taken about the same amount of damage. Henry, of course, on the receiving end of a double team, so it's a bit unfair for him. But then again, Henry, he's got basically the ability, the power of two, of two, maybe even three average men. So in the end, it kind of balances out. I think you can make an argument that Edge and Christian working together just kind of makes it a level playing field. But at the moment, Christian is going to try to toss Henry out of this matchup. That's definitely a good idea as well. If you're not going to double team him, well, that's what they're looking to do right now. Perhaps maybe try to, I don't know, big boot into the ring post, spear through the barricade, whatever you got to do to take Henry out of this thing. Uh, but yeah, definitely getting Henry out of the equation early would be a good idea because then we can just keep it down to a one-on-one -on -one matchup between Edge and Christian, which would give both of those two men better odds to uh, walk out here with the gold. As we can see, Henry, he's going to toss Christian back in the ring. But as long as the three, these three men are on the outside, I mean, there can't be a decision. It's got to be in the ring. Let's look at Henry right now. He's got Edge off the top row, tossed him into the center of the ring. But Christian takes Henry down from behind as Henry's face bounces off the ring apron there, the hardest part of the ring. And, oh, this is not good. We saw Henry spear through the barricade. Not even really a spear, just thrust Christian through the barricade with such force, such power. We saw... Henry did the same thing that John Cena on main event nearly got a victory by countout because of it. And even though there can't be a countout victory in this matchup, I mean, there's no disqualification, no countouts, still taking Christian out of the matchup at this stage, that leaves it down to a one-on-one -on -one match between Edge and, Chris, uh, Edge and Henry. But we, we got to fast forward a bit later in the matchup because this one, much like the Shield, much like the Shield Wyatt matchup, went on for quite a while. And when it's a triple threat matchup, you know that tends to happen. Nice European uppercut there off the second rope. Edge trying to crawl into the cover. But Henry got the shoulder up, broken up by Christian. Whatever the case may be, was not the end of the matchup. Back suplex right there by Christian. But yeah, Christian's going to be feeling the effects of that spear through the barricade. I don't know why I keep calling it a spear. It's not a spear. Although I guess it kind of like a powerhouse spear, I guess you could say. Like a big man spear. More just like a tackle. I guess would be the proper description, but now's not the time to debate that. Christian, he's going to go for that springboard European uppercut once again to the jaw of Mark Henry. And Christian going up to the second rope here. He's trying to take Henry out of this thing. Went for the splash, but it looked like he accidentally caught Edge with his foot there. Henry, this is the opportunity. But no, Christian kicks out. 
Cross. Just like that, Henry was close to winning the title. And Christian taking the fall damage while also taking Edge out. If you get a move like that, maybe you dive off the top rope, knock both men down. Then almost it's almost just a choice of well, who do you want to cover? Who do you think is the who do you think you have a better chance of defeating? And it's that moment of decision where you can't you can't afford to waste any moment of time. And now with this Christian kick to the face of Edge right there. And now look at Henry. Henry looking to capitalize with a world's strongest slam to Edge. Goes for the cover. One, two, not even a two count. Christian, he's right there to break it up. But still, that's that's an instance where Christian, if he had if he had gotten too caught up in the move at hand, he would have lost the title. Wait a minute, Christian. Roll up on Henry. Two count. No, Edge breaks it up at the last second. That's another instance. You know, Edge getting hit with the world's strongest slam. If he had been unable to make it back to his feet in time, we would have had Christian retaining the title. But at the moment, Henry is trying to go after Edge. Christian's stuck there in the corner. Nice running bulldog by Edge. Taking Christian down. And at this point, all alliances have gone out the window. It's every man for himself. There are no friendships at this point in the matchup. It's just who can win the title first. Henry, he's waiting for one of these two men to get back to his feet. It doesn't really matter who. Mark Henry, world's strongest slam for a second time on edge. And now into the cover. One, two, no. Not even a two count. Christian manages to get out of his days there. Into the cover. Henry drops to a knee. Christian tries to capitalize with the pin, but Henry breaks it up. Yeah, definitely was a close call there for Henry. As you know, in that moment of recovery, he almost lost. And it would have been fun. It would have been ironic because he would have been the one who delivered the final blow to Edge. But as you can see now, just a bit of a stalemate at this point. Neither of these three men can seem to gain the upper hand. Another break up there by Edge. And you gotta take out both of your opponents. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to get a victory. This isn't a fatal four-way where there's some fourth man who can keep the third occupied. This is a triple threat, which some may argue makes it more difficult because you gotta you have to take out both of your opponents to get the victory. Whereas in a fatal four-way, two opponents could keep each other occupied and distracted. And look at this roll by Christian, but Edge kicks out the last second. As Henry almost wasn't able to make it there in time. Luckily enough for him, Edge was able to kick out. And now there's a cover off the sidewalk slam by Henry. Two count. Yet again, broken up by Edge. And now look at Edge. He's going for the Edgecution DDT. And Mark Henry's in trouble. Covered by Edge. One, broken up once again by Christian. And this is just an instance of, well, who can, who's going to get the lucky break first? And it's almost just at this point up to circumstance. Look at this. Christian. Well, he went for a drop kick off the top rope, but somehow missed both, par both participants. But Edge now, thats this is an opportunity for Edge to strike. As Christian, he's struggling to get back to his feet. He's made it back, though. And now Edge going to the top rope, looking looking high risk here. You can tell he's getting desperate. Look at this. Well, he went for an axe handle, but Henry was much too far out of range for that. And that's partially due to Christian, kind of distracting Henry. But at the moment, back and forth between these three men. Christian once again stuck in the corner. Backed into a corner, literally. Now Henry, he's backed into a corner. Christian tosses Edge into another corner. And now look at Christian, he's trying to take out both men. This is a very good strategy on the part of Christian. Captain Charisma, the world champion. Oh, what's he gonna do here? Going high risk with a Hurricanrana off the top rope. Taking out the Rated R Superstar, but Henry, he tried to go for the pinfall. And that allowed Edge, you know, now Edge getting back to his feet. But Christian, he's gonna try to take Henry out here. No, Edge breaks it up. Completely interrupts that move. So Christian now really doesn't really know what to do. He's just going to stand back and kind of watch. Let Edge do his thing. Try to pick his spot here. As Henry. Not sure what Henry's going to try to do here. Just kind of waiting for Edge. Trying to think of a game plan here. As he's got Edge. Backbreaker right there to Edge. As Edge is in trouble now. But look at this. Look at this. Henry's in trouble. Kill switch by Christian. That could be it. Christian. Edge is down. Hits the kill switch. Christian could have him. If he can just roll Henry over, hook the leg. One, two, three, and Christian retains the World Heavyweight Championship. Edge now back to his feet, but not in time. Is now all he can do. I mean, first thing he sees is Christian celebrating the victory. Edge, just that moment in time where Christian, he saw his opportunity, and he took it. And I'm sure Edge of, Edge of all people, the ultimate opportunist, 
I'm sure Edge can respect that. And, you know, that was a fair fight between these three men. There was no real trickery or anything between those three. It was just Christian, he had the opportunity, the circumstances were aligned that he would get the opportunity to hit the kill switch on Henry, and he took it. And that's what you gotta do in a triple threat. But now it's time that we move on to the biggest, well, arguably, the biggest fantasy match in the history of wrestling, as it is the icon, the franchise of WCW, and now here in the WWE, the Vigilante, Sting, as he will go one-on-one -on -one with the undefeated Undertaker. Undertaker, of course, 21-0 at WrestleMania to this point, and of course, just the standard bearer in the WWE locker room. As we could just see, this is a battle between, you know, the counterparts almost of each respective show back in the back in the late 90s, back in the Attitude Era. Sting, he was, you know, he was WWE, or WWE, he was WCW's, I wouldn't say golden boy, he wasn't really, I mean, he wasn't always considered the face of WCW, but he was, he was always there. He was always somebody you could count on, he was loyal to the company, and he was willing to do what was best for business. And that's exactly what The Undertaker was for the WWE. You could argue that they both came from kind of gimmicky sort of beginnings. Sting, where he was this kind of surfer sort of character with the, you know, the crop cut, uh, the haircut. Undertaker, obviously when he started, his he was very gimmicky. But you can tell that these superstars, they've been able to adapt these gimmicks into characters that have just stood the test of time. All, the, all this time later, many decades after they began, Sting, Undertaker, they're still going strong. Sting, of course, you know, he disappeared for a while after WCW. Many wondered when would he make the jump to WWE. And I, it took a very long time, but Edge is fu or Edge. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Sting has finally made it to WrestleMania. And of all the stages, WrestleMania 30. I don't even... Just the 30th anniversary of WrestleMania. There couldn't be a better stage for this. Except uh, maybe Texas and WrestleMania 32. <coughs> anyway, but that's, that's up to fantasy booking at this point. We'll see if WWE in the real life runs with that. But here, WrestleMania 30, the 30th anniversary of WrestleMania. Who better to have a match than The Undertaker, who for 21 WrestleManias has faced 21 opponents and defeated every single one of them. The biggest mon monument, the, I don't know exactly what to call it, but the biggest sort of spectacle in the history of wrestling, The Undertaker's streak. I mean, just this entrance just sums up what The Undertaker is. It's, it doesn't matter how long the, the Undertaker's entrance is. It could be up to 10 minutes. You wouldn't even know it, because you get so caught up in the moment. Just, I mean, you saw all the druids there, the, the smoke, the fire, the pyro. I mean, just everything about The Undertaker, just his pure presence. You can just, it just envelopes you and you can feel it. And in this kind of a matchup between icons, between legends, two Hall of Famers, future Hall of Famers, I guess, would be the correct term, but is there even debate? Sting, he was one of the biggest superstars in WCW, helped catapult them to the top to compete with WWE, and at a time, for over a year, best WWE in the ratings. And then The Undertaker, I mean, need I say more? The Undertaker. His history has been well documented with the streak. The fact that he's been the standard bearer in the WWE locker room for well over two dec decades. And now we can finally see these two square off in a match. The best pure striker in the WWE versus the vigilante, the icon Sting. They go by many nicknames, but ultimately Sting and The Undertaker. The two men, perhaps two of the biggest names in wrestling, squaring off here tonight at WrestleMania. And at the moment, Undertaker has started to gain the upper hand, but Sting fires back with a strike of his own. And this is just a pure fantasy matchup. 
This is a match that everyone wanted to see. Everyone still wants to see. It could still happen. But in terms of any fantasy matchup that could ever take place, sure, you've got the likes of The Rock and Shawn Michaels up there, but ultimately, no matter what any of those matches may be, this one right here, I think, is the one that everybody wants to see. Sting and The Undertaker. The two of the best in the Attitude Era. Two of the most loyal superstars to their respective companies. And we can finally see them square off in a wrestling ring to find out who is the better man. Is it Sting or is it The Undertaker? At the moment, Sting with a nice counter. Gains the upper hand on The Undertaker for the moment. But as I say that, Taker counters back with a strike of his own. And if you're Sting, I don't know if you really want to get into a battle of strikes with The Undertaker because there's a reason why they call him the best pure striker in the WWE. Those those punches could they could knock you out. I mean, they'll definitely stagger you and that could set you set you up for anything, really. Whether Undertaker if he just wants to take his time and and punish you or if he just wants to go straight for the tombstone. I mean, you'll be you'll be too loopy, too dazed by the by his strikes, by his just punches at the beginning of the matchup. You're done. You're not gonna stand a chance. For I mean, forget about the rest of the match. You're done right there. There is no rest of the match for you. But Sting, he's, man, he's done a very good job at blocking those punches, at dodging them. And now Undertaker going to take him down with a leg drop right there. As Sting, he's trying to get back to his feet. And imagine, of all people in the history of the streak, imagine if Sting was the man to end it all. If Sting was the man to make 21-0, 21 and 1. Well, at the moment, it's not looking too good. Choke slam by The Undertaker. But Sting, look at Sting, right back to his feet, completely no selling the choke slam. And now delivers a couple of clotheslines, delivers a third right there. Taker backed into a corner here. And Sting, he's gained the upper hand, hits the Stinger splash. Sting could have the victory right off that one. Cover on Taker, doesn't even hook the leg. Two count, kick out by Taker. But I mean, you gotta think. When, when it's The Undertaker, would that really be enough to end the streak? I mean, The Undertaker, we've seen in matches in the past against the likes of Triple H, Shawn Michaels, Edge, CM Punk. I mean, Undertaker, he's he'll go to any extent to win a match. And it, you, you gotta kill this man to beat him. Sting now delivers a kick to the gut of The Undertaker. As Taker going up to the second rope. And this is what's going to happen in these kind of matchups. They'll have to dig down deep. Perhaps bring out completely new moves in their arsenal. Moves we've never seen before from either of them. To try to put each other away. Kick out by Taker on the attempted pinfall by Sting. But now Sting has really gained the upper hand on the dead man. As he, you can just see by that kick to the gut. It just tells the story at the moment. Sting, he's got the upper hand. Just taking the fight to the Undertaker. And as he picks him up, Taker, he counters. And side rush and leg sweep takes down Sting. And of course, just as I say that one participant is gaining the upper hand, the ties have to turn. The momentum has to shift. Because that's always what happens. And now the Undertaker, he's got Sting propped up against the ropes here. And he clotheslines him over the top to the floor. Oh, and we're going to see it. The Undertaker building up a full head of steam. A dive over the top rope. Taking out Sting to the floor. That is vintage Undertaker. Something we see only at WrestleMania. The Undertaker, it's not a move he pulls out very often, but you can guarantee when the stakes are high, The Undertaker, he'll throw his body on the line just like that. As Sting right now, he's he's down. The Undertaker took a bit of a, bit of a breather there. Got, uh, tried to, yeah, it's, I can't even talk now. I mean, just this matchup, it's really, I'm just in awe at this, at this point in the matchup to see that these two superstars are actually facing off. Oh my god, Sting, is he gonna go for this for the Scorpion Death Drop? No, Taker counters with an elbow to the face. And now, whoa, counter by Sting as Undertaker was looking for something big there. Taker counters again, this back and forth exchange between these two men and the Undertaker. Oh my god, Sting, you're in trouble. Last ride is Sting, you could see how high up in the air he was for that last ride practically standing on Taker's shoulders and Taker in his own right is a very tall man to lift somebody up 
nearly like twice his height. Sting, he's got to be out cold. And The Undertaker, well, he knows he's got Sting reeling. And now he's going to try to beat him by submission here. The Hell's Gate locked in. This, this is a very destructive submission hold right here. Sting just getting choked out. He's so close to the ropes, but yet, you know, I don't think he's going to be able... No, he actually managed to slip out of it there. Somehow managed to survive the Hell's Gate. And now The Undertaker countered by Sting. He's caught the leg, and now he sweeps him out. And he's going for a Boston Crab here. And Undertaker, now he's got to get to those ropes. He's got to break this submission hold. And that's exactly what he does. He manages to get a rope break. But Sting, of course, with these, you know, those types of submissions, the shots to the lower back, try to soften Taker up for the... Ah, I keep... I don't know why I keep stuttering. But try to soften him up for the Scorpion Deathlock. Not to be confused with the Scorpion Death Drop. But as we can see now, St Undertaker. Oh, are we going to go old school here? I think we're going to see it. Taker, he's up on the top rope. And he delivers old school to Sting right there. And now Undertaker, he's going to end it. He's calling for the finish. He's measuring Sting, waiting for him to get back to his feet. And the Undertaker, he's thinking Tombstone. Tombstone pile driver and a leaping one at that. Spiking Sting's skull, the top of his head, into the canvas. And that's going to be it. Good night, good night, Sting. One, two, three. The Undertaker with the Tombstone pile driver puts this match to bed. Sting, one hell of a performance here tonight. A matchup that... I think it very I think it very well lives up to the hype. Two legends that we never thought we'd see competing in a ring, putting their bodies all putting everything on the line here tonight to try to walk out the winner here at WrestleMania. But in the end, it was The Undertaker who went 22 and 0. And this is just what happens when you face The Undertaker on any other night. He may be he may be a very powerful man, but he's an ordinary man. But this is why they call him the Phenom. At WrestleMania, he just, he becomes almost this godlike boss that you just, almost impossible to defeat him. No one's been able to do it for 22 WrestleManias. And The Undertaker, his legacy will live on. The streak continues. He defeats the icon Sting here tonight. And I guess we know that The Undertaker, you know, he, his character, he is a person, you know, has just better, better stood the test of time than Sting. But now, after a long, long wait, we finally made it to the main event here tonight at WrestleMania, as it will be the WWE Champion, the Brahma Bull, the People's Champion, The Rock, taking on the winner of the Royal Rumble, the first ever Royal Rumble in Universe Mode. The best in the world, the second city saint, the straight edge savior, CM Punk. And this in its own right is a bit of a fantasy matchup, although I guess you could say it has happened in the WWE, but yet to happen in Universe Mode. The Rock, he came back and after a while, finally managed to capture the WWE Championship at the Elimination Chamber. Despite all the struggles he went through in his battles with the Shield, The Rock he did manage to turn his career around after returning. And he managed to get himself into the main event picture. But tonight, this man, he's looking for redemption. CM Punk, the former WWE Champion, and really ever since he lost his title back to Dean Ambrose at Capital Punishment, CM Punk has really fallen from grace. He's fallen from the main event picture into more of an upper mid-card superstar. He was competing in rivalries against The Shield, John Cena, you name it, and Punk really was just on the losing end of most of those matches, most of those rivalries. Although he did, you know, for a while there, he was starting to kind of regain his composure. He really never re he never really built himself back up into the main event superstar the the best that he claimed that he claims to be. And finally, his opportunity came at the Royal Rumble where he was able to bring himself back to the top. 
came in at the number six entry to the to the Rumble match, and he managed to get the victory, outlasting 30 or 29 of the superstars to finally get himself back to the top. And he, well, one of the things about CM Punk's career, one of the things he almost had on, I guess you could call it a bucket list, was to main event WrestleMania. That's something that CM Punk has never done to this day in his career. But tonight, here at WrestleMania 30, CM Punk can finally get that main event match at WrestleMania. And, of all people, against The Rock. Somebody that we know CM Punk does not see eye to eye with. The Rock, he came back at Survivor Series and was placed seemingly in this top spot. Although, he, even after he lost to The Shield... The Rock somehow managed to keep himself in the WWE Championship hunt, and he lost his opportunity several times to get a shot at the title. He lost in a number one contenders match to Batista on Raw. He lost the Royal Rumble, which CM Punk won. And, you know, Rock, he had had several opportunities, but he was just, he just kept being given more and more opportunities at the title. At the Elimination Chamber, you know, third time was the charm, I guess, for The Rock. And he won it all. He won the Elimination Chamber, won the WWE title. And CM Punk, you know, we know Punk's ideology. He's more of a... He believes that, you know, the superstars who were there 24-7, who really put in the work, he feels that they should be the superstars at the top. Whereas you see superstars like The Rock. I mean, you can even throw Hulk Hogan, Steve Austin into this sort of area. And I guess also... You know, we really saw it um, competing against the Shield. We saw guys like, you know, Scott Hall. Uh, I was going to say Razor Ramon, but they're the same person. Duh. I'm sorry, this commentary. This episode, it's really been a long one, so I do apologize if I'm starting to, if I'm starting to get loopy from so much commentary. But the Outsiders, two, two-thirds of the NWO, Kevin Nash, Scott Hall. And then, of course, Hogan and Austin. You know, they've been, they were put into these main event roles. Uh, at the time going up against the Shield, but we've also saw The Rock, the main instance here, coming back, being given these top spots, taking potential pay-per-view matches away from deserving talent. Guys like Dolph Ziggler, Jack Swagger, you know, Curtis Axel, the superstars who have really been building themselves up, Cody Rhodes as well, could, well, yeah, Cody Rhodes could be thrown into that list. There's many others who I'm forgetting, but could also be thrown into that list. You know, those featured spots have been taken away by these returning legends. The superstars who just kind of come back and are given these opportunities just because of their past credentials. And CM Punk, he doesn't agree with that. He's voiced his opinion many times. Many, 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 many times. Too, mu too many times to count that he does not agree with that. And this is his opportunity here tonight to prove that, you know, those who work hard who aren't given the opportunity. Oh, clothesline there off the, off the knee to the face. Covered by Punk. One. Not even a one count. Rock kicks out. But this is opportunity. I mean, Punk, he can either put up or shut up. Because if he loses here tonight, well, got to hold that thought. Go to sleep by CM Punk to the Rock. And that could be it. Hooks the leg. One. Two. No. Kick out by the Rock. As he manages to kick out of the GTS right there. But you have to say, if Punk loses this match here tonight, where does he go from here? Because, you know, he's been the big advocator for the young, the younger talent to try to build them up, give the superstars who put in the work the opportunity they deserve. But if he can't defeat The Rock here tonight, then that cause, not to say it's gone completely, but that cause, I would have to say, definitely takes a big blow, at least in terms of CM Punk's standpoint, you know, his ego. You know, he's been advocating for all these superstars, but then if he can't get the job done here tonight, what kind of an example does that show the younger talent, the up-and-coming superstars who do put in the work? I mean, they could perhaps... I mean, would they perhaps be given sort of the same treatment? But let's actually focus in on the matchup a little bit because I feel like I haven't done that enough uh, to this point. So we can see The Rock has turned the tables. He's gained the upper hand on Punk who has, for the majority of this matchup, controlled the pace. Oh, what a kick to the face of The Rock right there. And CM Punk, he's got The Rock right where he wants him. 
off that big calf kick to the face. Delivers it into the gut. Perhaps gonna set, I don't know. Punk, he's going to the top rope. Maybe, maybe trying to set Rock up for that elbow drop as he pays homage to Macho Man Randy Savage. Punk up on the top rope, but Rock, he's out of position. And Punk, he's gonna have to think of a new strategy. He's gonna have to come up with a new game plan. Rock counters though. And that could be the opportunity he needs to gain the upper hand on Punk. Because there's a nice Irish whip. Punk bouncing off the ropes and right into a spine buster, The Rock. He's firing up, he's hulking up here as he delivers the spine buster. Center of the ring to CM Punk. And now he's looking for the rock bottom. He's measuring Punk. And he's looking to play him center of the ring. Rock bottom, rock bottom right there by The Rock. But you can tell The Rock, he's, he's gassed right now. It really has taken a lot out of him. He's taken a beating to this point, but he managed to go for the cover. Two count, three, no! CM Punk kicks out at two and three quarters. Two and seven eighths. And you have to think, if Rock, if he had been able to recover faster, if he hadn't taken the damage he had up to this point, perhaps he suffered an injury even. But if he had been able to capitalize immediately, he may have retained his title right there. But CM Punk, he knows he's got Rock down. He's got him... Dazed, he's off, he's off balance. Go to sleep for the second time. And that is gonna be it. There's no way, there's no way The Rock's gonna kick out of two of these. One, two, three. CM Punk defeats The Rock. And he has finally realized his dream of main eventing WrestleMania. And he's won the main event of WrestleMania. He has won the WWE Championship back. His quest back to the top has been a successful one as Punk gets his redemption and he defeats The Rock here tonight. And now CM Punk, he's back on top. He can retake his place as the example for the younger talent, the future generation of WWE main eventers. CM Punk, his journey's finally come to an end. And speaking of journeys, our journey to WrestleMania has finally come to an end. I want to thank you all so much for the support over the past three years to this point. Throughout WWE 13, 2K14, and now 2K15. We finally made it to a WrestleMania. And, you know, I feel like CM Punk right now. We've just hit a huge milestone in this series. We've really achieved something great. And I want to thank you all for the feedback, the support over the years. Thank you for sticking with me through the first year, the first calendar year of Universe Mode. Thank you for sticking with me throughout this entire video. Please, I don't I don't normally ask very often, but please, if you enjoyed, like this video. It shows me direct feedback as to how many of you really appreciated the video. How many of you like this? All, as always, more important than likes, I want your comments. I want the feedback. What do you think of the pay-per-view? And don't just rate it a 10 out of 10 simply because it's WrestleMania. Give me your honest feedback, what you think I could improve on for future pay-per-views, what you liked about this pay-per-view, what you're looking forward to, heading into Extreme Rules, to the WWE Draft, which is coming up next. I know I mentioned it earlier, but the WWE Draft is going to take a while to work on, so please don't spam me asking when the next episode is going to be, because it's going to be a little while, maybe a week or two, but it will be up, and it's going to be epic. The WWE Draft is about to change the complexion of Universe Mode for the next calendar year. But that's it for this video. I want to thank you all for watching. And as always, keep on YouTubing.